。check it out so this is the part three earth outlaws uh cover one speed video so this right here is the final art uh you are going to see me in this video draw this dude right here right there on the right hand side of the circle um i thought i would take the time to just kind of answer any questions brandon you have any questions about me drawing this you have anything you want to ask yeah answer? um what was uh What's your major influence on this? Was it based off their character design or maybe some kind of war stuff you liked or even personal type stuff? Because I know you served. So, I mean, when you go in and you make these... I didn't serve in the Space Marines. I don't... No, but you, you served. You <laughs> served. I served. What, what do you think we my, did in the Army? Like... <laughs> my point is, when you go in... <laughs> I never. I don't know, man. I didn't serve. My point is, when you when you go and you make these these soldier type people, do you have some base of like okay like reference from you know other other past military stuff you like or sometimes when you draw guns you think how they would actually work things like that i mean when you go into the process like that you're just like yeah i'm gonna draw some big first years off, of war first off this this is probably what most soldiers think they look like right and then what they actually right. look like are the dudes that major pains ordering around in major pain <laughs> So, right. <laughs> first time I saw Major Payne, after I'd been in the army, I was like, that, "That's actually fairly accurate, minus the goofs." You know, like they actually got right. some some stuff in there that's fairly accurate. Uh, not that interesting. Uh, no, so the comic book's called Earth Outlaws. If you guys go check out Earth Outlaws, be amazed, Studio. Uh, the characters are already kind of figured out. They don't exactly look like this this is like my interpretation of them they do have space ah. armor i think it more resembles the starcraft dudes you know mm -hmm. i think it kind of heavily leans on that design so i mean i had that to start with uh i always have my own little like easter eggs I like to put in so this back booster armor here uh with the wings on the top right right uh that's actually a section that i snuck off a game called metal storm from NES. It's one of the last games to come out on the NES back in the 90s where you played a mech. And it was cool because you could flip the gravity where you actually played on the top of the ceilings or the bottom of the ceilings. Super fucking hard game. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So this is just a little gamey nod there. And then a little bit of this gun here I borrowed from Gears of War just to put in another gaming reference, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I like to work little Easter eggs like that in. Everything else I just make up. You know, like I know shoulder pads. and So I kept the basic Warcraft kind of thing, but uh, I build on top of their actual structural anatomy. And I've drawn so many, like, I don't know what you call it, space, I don't know, I even space marine dudes, but I've drawn a lot of tech gear over the years, you know, Brandon? Like, right. So I just have my own little way of doing, drawing chunky grenades. And chunky with, with, my, with my dumb question, what I meant to say was, it sure seems like when you are making things as far as guns or spikes or pipes or anything like that it usually has a purpose or a reasoning behind it. like they actually look functional like these look like action figures but the guns and stuff still look like all right this is where it recoils this is where like the smoke would come out of the barrel this is where you would load the magazine like it actually looks like you put thought into it you're not just drawing like life field guns you know what i mean well first off i i when i'm drawing it i put a little bit of thought you know to avoid the life field gun thing uh, right. It was weird when I was a kid uh, in high school when Stephen Platt first started drawing stuff, right? Um, you know, the artist Stephen Platt. A bit of an influence on me. And this kid, he was like, I was in this math class, and I don't remember his name. I think it was Josh. I think his name was Josh. <laughs> Funny. I don't know about it. Uh, <laughs> it's always some snarky Josh, right? And he right. was the kid who had all the expensive comics. So he had like Bone Issue 1, which was like 300 Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So he was like oh, a little yeah. rich kid that had everything. And so he would go you know 
I heard that Stephen Platt doesn't actually draw his own guns. It's the inker. And I was like, oh my God, he doesn't draw his own guns. You know, like, I, I right. for some reason, I would just believe him because he was rich. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. <laughs> Thus, yeah. eventually learning rich people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You know? Right. <laughs> so, not always. So, I made it a personal goal of mine that when I would draw guns, I would at least, you know, draw a basic shape. Look, some of this stuff is done super quickly for time. But what I do now is I just block in, you'll see the video, I just block in basic silhouettes. And then I draw mm -hmm. center and I work out different shapes. You can go and grab, you know, f reference from physical realistic weapons and then start with funky little like silhouette shapes where it's all sci-fi and then take chunks. They call it kit bashing. Back when they made the original Star Wars, they did some initial concept art, Ralph McQuarrie and different artists. But what they would do is they would start out with a basic shape because Ralph McQuarrie wouldn't go around painting every little detail in the Millennial Falcon. It'd be there for fucking 10 years. It was really smooth art. But what they would do is take that smooth art shape. So, you know, the shape of a pie with the front ends. Then they would go buy 10,000 different model kits from vehicles from World War II, whatever. And then they would take elements and glue them on. And they called that kit bashing. So I start with basic shapes that I make up. And then sometimes I'll go and grab different reference and I'll take little chunks and add in. And then maybe something that's a small little piece on an engine, like a car engine, I'll <laughs> blow up and go, oh, that, that'll be this over here. In this particular right. case, given the time I had on this, literally the only reference I really used was I wanted to put in a piece of Metal Storm back here because I thought those wings would look cool and I wanted something 80s or early 90s. Like those turbine kind of looking things? Yeah, this is the whole back section from Metal Storm. You go look at Metal Storm again, you'll see, oh, Rob just put that in there. So not from any specific image, just looking at the way the robot was designed. I wanted that, that in there because um, I fucking love that game. And seeing as how I felt the original characters were uh, sort of homaging another video game starcraft i thought well it'd be funner to put something a little bit less obvious you know in here mm -hmm. everything else is just made up as i go so i have in the past um you know done more like reference where i think i drew a chick on this like bike once like a engine bike you know and i'm drawing this complicated right. engine bikes. but i've just done it so much it's just cons it's literally it's mostly just in my head now you know so long right. as the big functional pieces are there then you're good to go. Like trigger, handle, you know, the the, the part back with it. you cock the trigger, the, the receiver, whatever that is. I don't fucking know the names. So you know, I, I could I, disassemble a fucking fifty cal, but right. I couldn't tell you the parts. And Brandon, you know this about me. I don't really remember names to anything. No, right? you don't. Yeah, you don't. I don't streets. I it, I couldn't tell you. Even in San Diego, if you're like, "Go oh, what street?" I'm like, "I don't fucking know. I know how to get there." You know, like. Oh <laughs> uh, no, that's true. We have to play like a game of, like word pictionary. Whenever you come to visit, you're like, "Hey, let's go to that place by that street." You know, they had the good uh, chips. I'm like, uh, "All right, I so got it." In college, I had this anatomy class, and we had to memorize the name of the bones, the Latin names. And so I asked the teacher, "How much of this?" test is, well, is part of my grade he's like well it's a 30 year grade i'm like okay so i just fucking didn't pay attention bomb that part and ace the other two parts because there's no fucking way i'm even gonna <laughs> attempt like i'm like, i don't i'll walk out with the fucking solid c plus excellent you know like right. but i'm not i'm not even gonna fucking waste my time trying to <laughs> memorize any names uh even like when i would post this the, the, the making of this stuff on instagram i don't know the character and and so I tag Be Amaze and they go, oh, this is so and so, and that's this chick is her name, uh, and I would see that and go, oh, I should remember that, and then I don't. You know what I mean? I think I would. No. I think one time I tried it and I spelt it wrong. You know, like like I think right. it's spelled like cat kiss Casey or Cass. I can't remember. I spelled it one word. This. I when I was working on any comic book, I don't memorize any other fucking names. I'm not. I'm not good with it. Like. You're not good with names at all. I mean, there's been times at Comic Cons, and I feel like I'm one of those. You know, you see, when you see in movies where it's like the president has his guy next to him, and someone will come up and he'll be like, "That's the ambassador to so and so." That's how I always feel when someone came up to our table. I'm like, "That's Mike." And you'd be like, "Hey, Mike, how's it going?" I'd be like, "Yeah, that's I Brian." I don't. That's why they should wear their fucking badges so I can read their names. So, anyways, are there any other questions about this stuff, Brandon, that you want to bring up before we, we roll on here? We're hitting the 10-minute mark. Anything? Like not, not so much a question, but just a quick thing that I think people should, artists that watch this and want to learn from is, uh, just like the guy around the guy's head, where those uh, pipes from the back coming around, coming to little cylinders things, how you build shapes upon shapes instead of making things flat. Um, I think artists need to just really pay attention to it. You know, the canisters, the way they 
they uh, they curve around the way they're held in there. Uh, certain things like that that I know I used to miss in the past, and I still do it time to time. I you know, would shape say building. this too. That, that's true. But also, what I did here is I am not making any of this perfect. Like if you zoom right. in, like it's super fucking loose. But like, it's you know, fun. Like, so like the, the other thing that I've been working on is I used to back in the day where I'd get out the fucking tool and every one of these things would be perfectly drawn through. I'd be fucking still here drawing it, you know? So I don't, I don't have time for it anymore, but I did it so, so like, I don't want to say perfectly, but I did it so meticulous for so long that now you, I can do like half the effort, you know, and I might get just evens out. So uh, most people, when they see it, they go, oh, it's super clean lens. I'm like, not really. Matter of fact, it's cleaner than, than if you zoom in now, you're going to see this understructure. It, the, the final lines don't even have this in here. I took this understructure, like you can even see his anatomy if you zoom in. I took right. that because I wanted to draw his anatomy straight through to show people online. Here's anatomy and here's how you can build the shapes off the anatomy. I didn't need to do that, but I like to show that part. But since I drew that, I'm leaving that shit in here. So I just turned that layer <laughs> to 20% opacity. I'm like, it's staying in, bro. You know what I mean? Like right. all, these, all these other lines are staying in. You know, like I'm keeping all this extra shit that you know, versus cleaning it, cleaning it, and making it perfect. I'm leaving all that stuff in because I'm finding that, see how this is in, if you go to the, the right wing, Brandon, mm -hmm. right wing, and you kind of zoom in, you'll see there's that, that piece in the middle, right? Um, and then underneath, you can see this blob of like black, gray ink back there. Like that's mm -hmm. my literal like roughy blob line. And I just <laughs> left that in there, you know? Like once it right. gets colored, no one can really, I mean, you notice it, but it's not like, it's not interfering. I'm like I'll jump guys really quickly to the uh, the final color version, which Brandon you have access to there. Mm -hmm. You don't really notice it much, you know? No, not at all. Yeah. So once it's colored, that's the thing too. Like, and plus now I'm like, man, I really wanted those in there, so I gotta I gotta find a way to make them more prominent in the final art. Like, like you can't even fucking tell, and they're in there. It's faintly in there, but it's it's there. You can see it right there. So I do gotta like play with the textures so that they pop through a little bit more. But at the same time, um, I've just found that uh, in my own experience, making it any more clean than this is a colossal waste of my time. Now, now, <coughs> studios would have me do that, right? right? So this is why now when I take on work like this, I show them, you know, my rough lines. I go, it's going to look like this. But when it's colored, it's going to look like this, you know? So, right. you know, you know, and if you don't like it, oh, far again, well, you know, like, we got to be careful about cursing now, because apparently YouTube putting up the whole ban hammer on the cursing. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I know, right? You can see all that alt-right shit. Oh, look, I cursed. So, there we go. I got to work on those little <laughs> beep sounds, too, you know, beep, beep, so, whatever, to demonetize my, my fucking video. It makes me three cents a year. Um, so, anyway, Brandon, that's, that's all I got here. If you want to know... Uh, I just drew this all with a round brush. It's my little round brush here. Just a basic round brush. I call it Rob Draw 2018, but there's nothing fresh about it, new, different. Just a basic round brush. Basic round brush, 72% opacity. I set my eraser to about 80% opacity. And that's it. You know, these things are layered separately, but that's just because um, I wanted to, I, I, I try to keep my workflow now similar to what I'm doing production art. Just mm -hmm. sort of the layer, just in just in case I gotta move something around um, or make a change. Uh, but that's it. That's all I got. Brandon, anything else? You can, you can, I like else? it. You can... I don't know the characters, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. So um, the next, so we're gonna just move right to the video, and then during the video, you'll hear Brandon and I talk about. Uh, there's a generic video I leave up. If you want to know all the different tools I use and my theories on using the tools, just stick around during the video, and I'll cover all that. And then uh, after certainly soon, we'll, I'll be putting up uh, this Cassie's her name, Cassie Casey. I'll be putting up her next, and then the coloring video. So that's it. All right, everybody, let's get to it. Peace.
Hey everybody, welcome to the four times speed drawing, painting, color penciling, whatever it is I'm working on. Right, Brandon? Whatever it is I'm working on. That's great. Right. It's a multi purpose. Yeah, we're speeding this up four times. Uh, I'm going to try to always keep these to around an hour if possible. So you got a good length here if you're, uh, <laughs> if you're, um, <laughs> if you like to put these on while you draw in the background, uh, that, that'll be pretty good, about an hour. Yeah. Uh, so I, I've normally done these in real time. Uh, with streaming, but they don't get a ton of views, and the hour ones seem to average more, so I'm just speeding this up a little bit. Um, this is also a generic opener, so if you have listened to this before, you can just skip it. There won't be any new information. I just want to put everything you want to know, whatever tools I use, uh, whatever things I'm doing. I just want to explain it here, so I don't have to create commentaries for a thousand more videos. Right, Brandon? Right, because there will be a thousand more videos. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, there, there will only be a thousand more videos if I don't have to do this every freaking time. So uh, just trying to make things more efficient, folks. So let's just start off with the typical tools that I use for digital art. So mm -hmm. let's start with digital art. Uh, Photoshop, I use Photoshop CS5. Now you're probably wondering, can you do anything that I do in another program? That answer is, Brandon, Yes. Yeah, pretty much. You know, you don't have to use Photoshop. Um, I use CS5 because I own it. I actually bought a copy for like, oh, I don't know, three three eighty. I think I paid more back in the day. It's pretty pretty good steal considering Adobe charges a monthly fee now, right, Brandon? That they do. Right. That they do. Um, for so I use Photoshop CS5. Uh, I've just been using Photoshop since nineteen ninety four. Since version two two point five. Right. I'm extremely comfortable with Photoshop. So. Um, if you prefer to use Clips Studio Paint, they go right on ahead. Use whatever you want. Use Procreate. I, I don't. I don't care. It's it's your show, guys. It's not, no. um, on my show, we use whatever the hell I want. Right, Brandon? <laughs> that is true. The way or the highway. I'm I'm trying so hard to not sound like a uh, uh, fuddy duddy jerkwad, frowny face. See that <laughs> see that frowny face guy in the, in, the, in the art in the beginning of the video? That's. <laughs> so if you're new and you're like, man, this guy's a jerk. Well, it's just. Uh, my advice is don't listen to anything else. <laughs> there you go. There you yeah. go. Stick to this. This is the best I get. <laughs> so I use Photoshop, CS5. I mostly draw with a round hard brush. Uh, and then I usually draw at about 72% opacity. And I use I, I take the same brush and just flatten it in Photoshop, create what I call an oil brush. And I set that to 100% opacity. And what I do in Photoshop CS5, I just put all my little tools in the tool presets. What that does is it just memorizes the settings per tool. So if you're watching me draw and you see me click over on this thing on the right hand side, that's just the tool presets. Um, but that's it. I don't, I don't really use anything else. Uh, the other thing I do is when I draw, uh, I erase, I take the same brush, which is the round brush, and I just turn the opacity down about 80%. Sometimes 64%, sometimes 90, but I average about 80%. So when I'm drawing uh, and I erase right there, it leaves these little bits, uh, little bits. underneath little the extras. little extras in the art. And that's something new. If you go back a, a few years ago on my digital art, you won't see that. Uh, but this is something I've been doing the last few years, and sorry, last couple years. And it really uh, just sort of has sped along my process. Turns out uh, it, adds, it adds something I like. So that's, that's what's going on there. Um, what else, Brandon? What else do I do in Photoshop? I use gradient maps. I have some tutorial videos on those gradient maps. That is right. You use gradient maps. Uh, you like to draw silhouettes when you're base, uh, doing your basic shapes and uh, body poses. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of that uh, stuff. Do you have videos on that about creating? Yeah, I got tons of those videos uh, on silhouettes. I have a whole thing on art tips, art tips videos, uh, playlists. So you can go to the playlist, you can just see a bunch of old art tips. If you have any questions, just let me know. We can always make an art tip video. I don't, I don't really charge for that. We just share the information. So, right. um, but I, I use a combination these days of, of cell shade or airbrushing, or I'll do things in grayscale and, and add gradient maps if I need to do more complex rendering so I don't have to spend a lot of time mixing color. Um, if you're looking for like really complex digital paintings, like how they do it at a Blizzard with those, you know, those Hearthstone cards, Brandon. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't come here. I, I don't really do that stuff. Uh, <laughs> but if they, if they, if at work they said we need that, then I would use gradient maps. I would do the whole thing in black and white, and then I would use gradient maps to color it. And I've done some digital paintings that way before in the past. So 
It's a pretty easy to find. Brandon has spent the past couple years organizing those art tips playlists, right? I have. I put them in great order and uh... I think if you just go through and you, you find something you like, you'll eventually, it'll lead you down a nice path of videos in a row of processes. Maybe it'll be digital drawing, then digital flats, and then digital coloring, and so forth. So it just, it's a nice flow to everything. So if you find something you like, there will be a flow after it of continuous videos of the steps. Same with all the real-time art videos. So I have a whole real-time art video playlist. I know a lot of people on YouTube don't generally dig through the playlists, but I really suggest you do because all those videos are in order of the project. So right. if you start on a color pencil, it's going to start with the roughie and then go into the, the, the drawing and then the color pencil all in order in the real-time art playlist. I think there's like 1,100 videos in there now, Brandon, somewhere around there. Give, give, give or take. I spent a good chunk of my life organizing those. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot. And they're, they'll, they're in great process of how you want to start your art and finish your art. And it's hit or miss. We streamed a lot of those. So if you, you'll you be able to hear us throughout the years. Uh, me just basically yelling at Brandon for the last four or five years. Uh, so that's always fun. I, sometimes I put that on, Brandon, when I'm really mad at you, and I just like to listen to myself harass you for a few hours. Oh, yeah. It's good times. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what else? What else we got? Brandon, is there any questions about Photoshop that I do? That anything you think I've been missing that you want me to bring no, up? No, I think, I think one thing you do good, good, great, though, is you organize everything, and it makes it very efficient. You know your buttons. You know your keys. You know all the stuff you need, and you have it organized, and you have a workspace set up so that if anything ever gets disrupted, you just reload your workspace and all your brushes, all your presets are all in order, which I recommend for any artist. If you have a certain set of the way you like to do things, just keep it organized. It'll save you time and searching for things. Yeah, also, if you're wondering what I used to draw on, I'm using a Cintiq 22 inch no touch HD monitor. Uh, but as my backup, I have a Cint Cintiq 20 inch USW CSX, something like that. Um, it's an older mm -hmm. model, but it checks out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Star Wars reference, Brandon. Uh, and I keep that as a backup in case this breaks. Or I gotta send it back to the shop. Uh, again, I also um, let me just say I also use a classic pen. Wacom makes a classic pen, which uh, is more thinner, so it's more like a traditional pencil. It's not as it's not that big bulky marker. And you've used the right. the two, right, Brandon? That, that's correct. You uh, you let me use it for a while, and then you took it back, and now I have the bulk back to the bulky sharpie. Yeah, thing. and that's why you don't see Brandon drawing much because it sucks to use that big bulky. It does pen. Suck. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit thicker than the Apple Pencil. I do have an iPad Pro. I prefer the classic Intuos to the Apple Pencil. Um, just the Apple Pencil is a little too thin, and I know Wacom's going to be making an even thinner one this year, which I hope to never use. So what I went and did is when they announced that new one, I bought three more of these. I have oh, wow. these backups just so yeah you know i've only gone through three ever in the last 20 years um of my you know one one uh whatever it's so, uh, a wacom pen so mm -hmm. i'm gonna keep these and i might end up when these cintiqs 22 inches uh end up in the rubbish bin i will probably go and buy a couple of those too with my extra cash and just store them for the future i know that sounds crazy folks but i don't have children so this is how i spend my money there you go. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, so in Photoshop, if you want to get your lines a little smoother, which I, I do recommend, not when you're sketching, but when you're doing sort of cleaned up lines, you can use a plugin called Lazy Nozumi Pro. Lazy Nozumi Pro is a plugin I use. Uh, I'll set it to just pressure. There's a setting you can do in Lazy Nozumi called smoothing pressure gain. And what that does is it automatically doubles the pressure. Uh, that you're using without you having to double the pressure. So you know how, Brandon, when you draw in real life, in the real world, you press too damn hard? Oh, I do. I almost put my fist through the paper. Yeah, yeah so when you set the pressure gain on with Lazy Nozumi, it will automatically double the pressure. So it's 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 you don't have to press so hard. You can oh, nice. train yeah, you train yourself to draw lightly. And I just set the number to eight in the amount. So there's very little lag. It's not over correcting the lines. I don't like super smoothing because it, I think it takes away from um, you know your, your, right. uh, your you style right but sometimes clients want something that looks really clean then i turn that back up to 25 and there's oh, some wow. drag yeah there's some drag but they get these super clean they're like oh it looks like vector i'm like it, it really isn't um but that that plug solves things uh, i don't use it at all when i'm doing my my initial sketches and stuff so um but i do use that so i turn it on and off give or take what i'm doing if i'm coloring i leave it off completely there's no point it's so only when i'm doing some cleanup stuff this way i can zoom out so if you if, you, if you're using that turn on to eight 
maximum 15 for for regular drawing uh you can work zoomed out a little bit more and it, will, it just won't it won't uh what do you call it, wobble and i yes i have used photoshop cs6 and cc and all that stuff was it cc the one where they added stabilization yes. yeah that sucks I don't, I don't like it so um and i know clip studio paint it comes with it i i do own clip studio paint but the problem folks is, is i've been using photoshop for so long all my shortcut keys are built into my left hand like all yeah. the things that i do brandon see me working like it's like uh my left hand's like typing while I draw. You know? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little creepy. It's like when you see like an animated robot or an anime, and the left, the hands are just clicking like a hundred buttons at once, and their yeah. face is like an inch away from the screen. Yeah. It's a little like that. It's disturbing. Yeah, I can't let it go. I can't let it go. Um, what else? What else should I say? Oh, Brandon, let's talk about traditional pencils and stuff that I use. Let's go move on to traditional. Yes. So I typically draw with red mechanical lead, mechanical pencil. I use Pentel. I also use blue uh, when I'm doing my sketches. And uh, these days I also use a yellow color pencil, just when I'm doing basic rough pen uh, pencil sketches to give yeah. my sketches a little bit of a glow. Uh, I ink with Copic markers, multi-liners. Uh, generally when I'm doing my standard regular sketchy inks when I use inks for color pencil drawing um, or watercolor I use burnt sienna this German Kloger or something or other Kleiner it's all below if you look below I got a very long list of all my materials correct so you can and dig down over there. years of trial and error right? trial and error and it constantly changes so you know we'll make another one of these videos right now someday whenever i completely change my whole process but as you get older you just tend to like different things you refine your processes if you you know you're that kind of artist as i am but that's mostly all i use uh, i use a zebra mechanical uh sorry, zebra ballpoint pen sometimes um that's it i don't use regular wood pencils or anything uh, i don't like the sound of i know it sounds weird but i can't stand the sound of a pencil on paper <laughs> i know right i know it sounds so weird i can't hey, take it enough. yeah it drives it's me crazy I, I get these weird I, just, I can't take it so uh i tend to these days sketch with mechanical color mechanical lead and then i ink the the, the draw with inks basically uh, what else? Let's talk about color pencils. I use Polychromos, Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, Brandon, there's a good reason why I, I use them primarily. I won't say all the time. I do use a few uh, Prismacolors, but that's because the Polychromos, only there's only like 100 of those things. So every right. now and then, there's a few colors, like some some sea foams and stuff like that that I like to use that they don't make. But... 99% of the time I'm using polychromos. And the reason for that is because they, they don't break ever. Brandon, I have never, to this day, <laughs> right? I have never broken one. Never they chipped the tip. sturdy. Yeah, no, not on, no, they're super sturdy. So I really, and they're, they're super creamy and, and they glide and you don't get that buildup that you get with the right. prism colors. Right, nice fluid stroke to them. And even with my gorilla hands and how hard I push, I've never broken a tip on any of the polychromos that uh, Rob, nice enough, was to buy me a nice set, and I love it. I got a little case. I've used the same hundred for the last, I don't know how many commissions. They last a long time. You can, you can reuse them a lot. It build, like you said, it builds up, and you don't, you're not going through, you're not wasting a whole pencil on one piece of art. Like you, it stretches out. They last. Um, anything else about color pencils? Um, we did we make a video? On, we no, do. we made a Copic yeah. marker video. Did we make a color color pencil? I don't think we ever made a color pencil video. You use so many color pencils, though. We do talk about it throughout the different ones on sketch covers and things. Right. And polychromos just seem to be the best fit for the the range of things you do from sketch covers at conventions when you did them, and you know commissions now. It just has a better look. It, tra it transfers over to uh, pictures and video. I think a lot better, and it shows the true colors. You know. Yeah, and so so that's, uh, that's basically it, mostly color pencils. And then for watercolors, these days I use PH Martin's uh, color dyes, and I'll also use, what else do I use? Sometimes, sometimes I'll use just basic uh, uh, Holbein, Holbein watercolors from time to time. So that, that sort of changes here and there. I haven't done watercolors in a while, but if you look on the last 
uh, watercolor paintings I've done over the past two or three years, those are all PH Martin uh, inks and dyes. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, if you look at my older videos, I have used Copic markers plenty of times in the past. I even made a video called Copic markers, 64 colors that I use. There's a link below, right in the art materials I typically use section. You can go right to that video. So, you know, I don't really do Copic marker rendering anymore. I just, just don't, I don't enjoy it. So, um, but uh, those are there. So I did do those for right. a few years. And that's it. Is there anything it else we're missing? Mean, it doesn't mean that you can't use Copics and it doesn't mean people watching this can't use Copics. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just as you grow as an artist, you start to like to use different products more. But I think that in this YouTube page, Twitch and everything that we have, you show a wide range of different products for people to try and use. And, you know, you give great input so that people aren't wasting their money because we've we've spent and you've spent a lot of money on things that don't work, you know, but these are what work for you. Doesn't mean it'll work for everybody, but it's what works for us, you know. Do they work for you? <laughs> they do, I just don't work hard. <laughs> you say us and I'm like, I don't ever remember you doing art. Like you did that once. Work, I, yeah, yeah if the one time I do art once a year, I, they work. All right, all right, I'll take your word. I, I believe you, Brian. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, is there anything else we're missing here? Anything else? No, I mean, I think we've covered all the materials that we use and why over the, the years you've used them. I think in, the, in this video and every video moving forward, you will show how you use each thing and, you know, the different processes. Whether you love it or hate it, it's all in here. Hmm. It's a very generic placating statement, Brian. I'm proud of you. You know, you're, you're doing well <laughs> that's in life. Right? Try not to offend anyone. Don't worry. They, they, they probably didn't listen this far. Anyhow, uh, the ones that will complain at it. You know, the ones that care, you, 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 you folks, you listen all the way through. And those are the ones that we reward with... Uh, with uh, what, what are we going to reward them with? Brandon, make up a song. Virtual, virtual high five. So do, do, a, do, a, do a jumping jack. We <laughs> Do, one, do a jumping right. jack. Here we go. This right, is to go. reward the people. Here we go. Oh, I... Oh shit! That's it. <laughs> oh, you can, you can get one. Uh, oh, I got out of my chair for that. You can hear the. You can hear it, folks. He's not. He's uh, not gonna make it. <laughs> no, no. It, yeah. it, please don't listen any further and make me have to do two jumping jacks, people. Please I am stop. so glad, Brandon, that you organized that whole playlist before you dropped that on me. So you oh, know, yeah. like, yeah, cause that's you saved me. Well, I would never do it. So, right, right. <laughs> yeah, you, you you didn't save anything. I just was never going to do it. Um, so, but we do that for you, folks. We do it for you. So if you have any other questions or comments, just leave them below. Uh, if you're wondering again, will I ever make direct commentaries for the videos? I absolutely will, but they won't be for hour long videos. will be for like, you know, 10 minute ones. We'll do commentaries. Because right. I, I don't know how to talk about my own art for an hour. Like, like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I, uh, I don't uh, Once I get done drawing the, the roughy, I, for me, it's done. You know that, it's Brandon? Done. You're over it. Yeah, for me, like, anytime I get the roughy done, I'm like, oh, that's done. The problem is no one else will pay me to do roughies. I've, I've gotten close. Close. With the scribblies. Like, like how I tend to draw digital now. Correct. It's almost, I'm almost there. So that's it, folks. That's all I got to say. Uh, I'm super tired. I got other stuff to do. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. We'll get to them soon. Brandon, thanks for hanging out and putting up with. Uh, well, no, thank, 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 thanks, Rob, for putting up with Brandon. Uh, oh, you're thank welcome, you, Rob. Rob. And uh, thank you for having thank, you. Uh, thank me for putting up with you. I like that. You're welcome, Brandon. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad I could help. So, uh, all right, folks, we'll talk to you soon. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna crank up the volume here on the music for the. The remainder of this video and uh you 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 enjoy actually i i really do hope that you guys leave this stuff on when when you're drawing you know what i mean so we can all sort of feel like we're drawing together right brandon yeah that's what brandon does right you just turn on my videos i, do. I, do. I <laughs> pretend sure. like i'm drawing them i just take my hand and go over it like i'm doing it yeah. all right all right well, we'll see you all soon folks talk to you later goodbye everybody Bye. Bye.
Hey everybody, so welcome to the end of the video. Yay, you made it to the end. Right, we're in the very end. The very, this is it. This, this is, is the, the uh, alpha and the omega. We're at the end. All right, so if you stuck around this long, uh, don't worry, the next video will be up shortly. If this is in the future, it's already up. We'll be, I'll be drawing Casey next. And you'll see all that, plus the background. That's up next, so thanks for hanging out. Brian, anything else you want to add at the end of the video? I appreciate every one of you that actually hung out to listen to whatever I had to say oh. and all that. No, oh, except for me. 
No, Rob hates listening to me. Yeah, it's true. All right, everybody. See you all soon. Peace.